Like Forest Labs are spoiling us with a whole bunch of shiny new Flux models. Phil, Redux, Depth and Canny. Phil is a model for in-painting or out-painting. Depth and Canny are, as their names suggest, and work with depth maps or Canny edge outlines. Whilst Redux is a way to generate various image variations, a bit like IP adapter. I'll be using Comfy UI in this video, which is super easy to get up and running. There are also links in the video description for any Comfy UI beginners. The easiest way to get up and running with all this new stuff at home on your own computer is to head on over to the Comfy UI examples page, where you'll find workflows for each model, as well as information about what you need to download and to where. These are under the Flux Extras heading, so you'll need to scroll down the page a little bit. And the first one there, their example, is for the in-painting model Flux Fill. This model goes into your Comfy UI Models Diffusion Models directory, and there are examples for both in-painting and out-painting as well. You will need to accept the license when you try to download that file, just like you did with the original Flux ones. As you should already be aware, dragging the image into your Comfy UI will give you that workflow. There we go. And for in-painting, you're going to need to provide both a masked image and your prompt. All pretty standard stuff here with the dual clip loader for your prompt there. The new Flux Fill model, Flux Guidance, set interestingly high at 30 and they've also got a differential diffusion node to help that model. There, they've got the in-painting model conditioning doing its work before the K-sampler makes your image. I've chosen a lovely mountain scene here, haven't bothered changing the prompt, but this scene does need a mask, so right-click and open in Mask Editor. I've drawn this lovely mask here as an example, so that's where our fox girl should appear. Let's just save that to Node, queue up, and find out what happens. And yes, there she is. Now, I've also added an image compare node here. So let's zoom into this and we can see what's going on. All right, so as I bring this across, you may or may not be able to see some differences. Let's zoom into this rock perhaps a little bit. And as I bring this across, you should hopefully be able to see there are some slight changes there. Okay, let's zoom out again. But as we move across there, we've got our lovely anime style image. Okay, that's pretty good. And if we quickly look at their publicly available benchmark, um, wow, this is even better than the Ali Mama in painting control net. Look at that. If you've got larger images or you don't want things outside the mask to change, then you can do some cropping and stitching. There are quite a few options for this, but perhaps one of the easiest is this one here, in paint, crop and stitch. Very easy to install with Comfy UI Manager. Got the custom nodes manager there. You can search for Comfy UI crop and stitch. There it is, Comfy UI in paint, crop and stitch, install, restart, and then you'll have the nodes available. Like you can see here, the crop node will pick the masked area only and has loads of options for things like padding and blur built in. Then when your image is ready, the stitch node will put everything back together nicely for you. This time then I'm looking for a cool rodent wizard wearing a pointed hat who is sitting on the shoulder of a woman. There's the woman. There's the mask that I've got. The in-paint crop and stitch has gone okay. That's the area I'm working with. There's the mask and there is the result. So I've got my cool little rodent. Then the stitch node puts all of that back together. So now I've got the rodent on the shoulder. We have a quick look at the image compare. Now this time, even though I'm zoomed in, as you can see, there are no changes in the bit outside the mask. And then when I come across, we've got our cool rodent wizard. As for VRAM requirements, it is quite a big model, but of course I'm offloading clip here, saving a big chunk of VRAM, meaning all of this takes around 15 gig. But I'm sure we'll see various smaller model versions in the coming weeks. The next example is for Redux, and you'll see this one actually needs two models, with the first one being this clip vision model, going into your clip vision directory, and then the Flux Redux model, 
which goes into your model's style models directory. Redux gives variations on your input image, and this time the workflow is much like your typical Flux one, only there's a group for the Redux model there now too. Here, that clip vision model is loaded along with an image of your choice. You've then got the clip vision in code and the Flux One Redux dev save tensors going into the apply style model, which then forms the conditioning for your basic guider. Now, I do have to say this is probably my favorite out of all of these releases, particularly because it's now really easy to avoid same face, but also check this out. I mean, isn't that just an awesome variation? Sure, it's my first attempt and it hasn't actually followed the prompt because I was having a go at changing the style, but I still really like the result. Seeing how strong the style is, I figured I'd try it without any prompts at all. And yes, it's really cool. Love those variations and now I can make loads. With more realistic faces, that flux chin is trying to creep in a little bit, but I still think the result there is very good. Now then, as for making it follow the prompt a little better, I figured playing around with that conditioning was the way to go. So I threw in some conditioning time step ranges to see what would happen, uh, which is loads of fun as it turns out. Now in this test, I went with do my prompt first. So there, that's the prompt going in there and I'm saying end surprisingly actually quite low, 0.08. And then the rest of it is the style model. And yes, you could do it the other way around too. But once again, I loved the output for this and it's certainly moving more towards my prompt. Doing even less of my prompt. So in this example, 0.05, and it's got more of the anime style in there. So it does seem to be working as expected. As you can see in this image, I've got the end at 0.133 and it's definitely gone a whole lot more realistic, although many of the features from that input image are still there. And of course, if I go all the way up to, well, 0.4 in this case, it's pretty much mostly the prompt and very little of the style has been applied. Another option is to use the conditioning average instead of the time step range. And here I'm using just a tiny little bit of style, 0.08. And it's much the same effect as the other one, but I found the range was a bit too tight in this one. Early days yet though, and still very many things to try. Do let me know down in those comments if you find any good tricks. The final two examples are fairly similar depth and canny with both of those models there. You've got the flux one canny, flux one depth going into the same directory, your diffusion models one. An example here then running canny. So I've got my input image with a canny processor. So there it just turns it into the outline. That goes up interestingly enough to an instruct pix to pix conditioning node before hitting the K sampler. And there we've got the output, which once again, I think is very good indeed. Now this is of course using that full flux one canny model, which is very large. Maybe you don't want to use that. Well, that's fine because they've got a LoRa version as well. If you scroll down on that examples page, the one underneath there with the shark, that has the flux one canny dev LoRa and also the depth LoRa as well. Those of course, going into your model's LoRa's directory. This time, all you need is the LoRa loader. And for this example, I am using the depth one. The prompt is a lady wearing a t-shirt with a rodent on it. And in the background is a lovely landscape. The image is that one. I'm actually using depth anything V2 here to get my depth map from the image, but you could load a depth map straight off in there. Once again, the instruct pix to pix conditioning. And how does that come out? Well. Not bad at all. There we go. We've got the, the lady, the rodent t-shirt, landscape in the background, follow the depth map. Pff, very nice. Black Forest Labs do it again then. Lots of new models, loads more fun. Let's see what we can make with them. Ooh, nerdy rodent. He really makes my day. Showing us AI in a really British way. 